Okay, in this video, I'd like to prove a formula for thin film interference, or the optical path difference for thin film interference. So, I'll do a diagram first, and then kind of explain what we're getting at here. So, we're talking about when, basically, a piece of light is hitting a material, okay? And there is interference as a result of the reflected, we'll say, inter reflected rays. This is really a geometric optics problem. So, I'm going to define two areas. This one here is going to be an area with refractive index n sub f or final and this one here is going to refractive index of n sub i which is initial and I'm going to say that a ray coming in okay so I'm going to draw my ray like this it's coming in like that and some of it reflects immediately however some of it is transmitted through and eventually hits off the second uh, the second boundary it reflects up to here and then it um, and then it transmits again. And the thing is, there is an optical path difference, there is a, diff a difference in the distance these two rays travelled here. Okay? And I'm going to name the following points. I'm going to name this point here C, D, this one B, and this one here A. And if we look clear closely, we have theta initial, and we have theta transmitted okay I'm going to define this distance here as D please don't get it confused with the point D and that's all I've got to say now the next thing is I said that there is a difference in the distance traveled by the two rays and I'm going to say this this is capital uh, capital alpha or capital alpha isn't it capital alpha or I can't even remember lambda I can't remember to be quite honest, right? So the optical path difference, this is the optical path difference. This is the difference in the distance travelled by the two rays, one which reflects immediately off the interface and the other one which goes through and hits off a second uh, a second a second surface and reflects back out. Alright? So what we can say is following. We can say the optical path difference is equal to the distance travelled in the second medium whose refractive index is n sub f times, well, the distance from AB plus the distance to BC, okay, and we need to take away, oh, sorry, we need to close that, and we need to take away from that the distance travelled in the initial medium, or we'll say usually it's air, and the distance travelled AD, all right? So there are two lengths, so we're saying it travels from A to B and B to C, and we multiply that by the, the, the refractive index in that medium, and then we the distance from A to D and we just multiply it by the refractive index, index in that medium. Now a small bit of, we'll say, looking at it and a small bit of geometry will tell you the following relations, that the cos of theta transmitted is equal to D over AB, that the tan of theta transmitted is equal to AC over 2 over D and finally, that sine of theta initial is equal to AD over AC. Alright, just look carefully. We know Sokoto, if you're really stuck, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Just apply those relations and you'll get the following expressions. Alright, that's pretty straightforward stuff. Next, what do we do? We no longer need our diagram because we have all the things we need. Now, so let's once again go to our optical path difference. So, we have the following, that n sub f times, and let's plug in the values here for a, b, b, c, and a, d. And we're going to get the following, d over the cosine of theta transmitted, plus d over the cosine of theta transmitted, negative n sub i, the initial refractive index, times the, the distance AC times the sine of theta i, the sine of the initial uh, theta, incident, excuse me, initial incident grant. However, Snell's law, Snell's law, okay, something which we're well familiar with at this stage, Snell's law says that the sine of theta t is equal to n sub i over n sub f times sine of theta i. Okay? That's just a small bit of manipulation of Snell's law, something you should be well able to do at this stage. So we can say, of course, that the sine of theta i is equal to n sub f over n sub i times
times the sine of theta t, like so. Let's apply that to what we have, and we'll see that the optical path difference is equal to 2 times n sub f times d over cosine of theta transmitted, okay, and that's equal to n, uh, the initial refractive index, and then we're going to have the distance ac times n sub f again, times the sine of theta transmitted, all divided by n sub i. So we can do a small bit of cancelling here because we can get rid of our n sub i. Okay, and uh, I'll rewrite that now in one moment. Just let me clear my board. Okay, just bear with me now one moment. I'll keep the, I'll keep the diagram because that might be a small bit handy. So we had that the optical path difference is equal to 2 times n sub f times d over the cosine of theta t minus the distance ac n sub f and sine of theta t. All right. So what can we do here? Can we do any more? Um, can we do any more manipulation? Well, we know that we can. We can actually. We can put in something for AC here. So we can say the optical path difference is two times n sub f times d over the cosine of theta t. And we can say this becomes two d times the tan of theta t. Okay, because we already had that relation. That was one of the relations we had at the very start. And we multiply again by sine of theta t. Okay, this is one of the relations that we had at the start. All right. So we're doing very well now. Only a few bits, a few bits from the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say that the optical path difference is equal to two times n sub f times d over the cosine of theta transmitted. Okay, minus two d, and I'm going to put in that sorry, or excuse me, tan is uh, sine over cosine. So now we're going to get sine squared theta t over cosine theta t, uh, cosine theta t, whereby now we have a common factor. All right, so we're going to get that the optical path difference is equal to 2 times n sub f times d over cos theta t. And because we have, um, because we have, we'll say, uh, we have, let me think, how do I put this? Well, we have a common factor, I suppose, really, if we, if we take into account this n sub f as well, okay? Or did I do that? Where is my n sub f? Okay, sorry, excuse me, there's an n sub f up there. Sorry, I should have put that in from the start, n sub f. Okay, I missed that there, n sub f. All right, because that means you can put out n sub f times d here, and we're left with, as a result, 1 minus sine squared theta t. You might say, oh, hold on a sec, where did you get that? Well, cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So that's pretty straightforward stuff. And as a result, we can say the following. Uh, we can say the following. That becomes, excuse me, this here becomes cos squared. All right. And cos squared divided by cos gives a final answer. The optical path difference becomes 2 times n sub f d cos theta t. Boom. And that gives you the optical path difference for thin film interference. All right, that wasn't too bad. and I, I, I don't think that was too bad at all, to be honest. Uh, there is one other thing I'd like to say, just while I perhaps have your attention, and that we can define delta is equal to the wave number times the optical path difference plus or minus pi. Okay, now delta, excuse me, you should, you should be able to see that. Delta is something that you'll see really when you're, when you're manipulating the super, superposition of waves. And uh, how do I put it? Um, basically, we often define delta as, I will talk about that. No, I won't. I'll leave it alone, right? But look, if, you, if you're doing a course in wave optics, you'll understand what I'm talking about when I say delta. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.